Welcome to today's discussion on decision making. I'm joined today by Andrew Harding, Chief Executive Management Accounting at the Association of International Certified Professional Accountants. So Andrew, why is decision making so important for business? Decision making has always been, always been critical to business, but now more, now more so than ever. And a lot of that's to do with the speed at which we work, the speed at which change takes place. You know, we're living in a world which is increasingly volatile, increasingly, increasingly disrupted. Um, we're having to make more decisions, and we're having to make those decisions, those decisions faster. And that 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 places a challenge on leaders. It places a challenge on on executives in terms of how they formulate those decisions, and how they how they how they keep momentum on in making those decisions. As we go through our little session with Andrew, um, please feel free to drop comments into the, uh, the comments box. We'd love to hear from you. So Andrew, are there good ways and, or bad ways to make decisions? <laughs> yeah, there are plenty of ways to make decisions. Some of them are good, some of them, some of them, are, some of them are bad. You know, when, you, when, we think about, when we think about bad decision making, so often it's a decision which is driven by, driven by a short-term imperative. Um, Good decision making has a has a number of features. One, it's you know, it, it's data driven. Two, it's it's objective. Three, it's it's about the long term of the business. And you know, and four, it's it's holistic. It takes into account the entire environment in which we're operating. So, what may get in the way of some of those decision making? What gets in the way of good decisions? Well. There are there are a number there are a number of things that can get in the way of it. One of them can be the short term imperative, and that's that's very often, you know, very often a, a killer for a business. Um, but thinking about other things, sometimes it's it's personal bias, be that conscious or or unconscious. Um, you, know, you talk about decisions made by gut feeling; they're driven by. They're driven by experience. Sometimes those, sometimes those can be good and they can be quick decisions because someone really gets the environment. But other times, you know, you can have conscious or unconscious bias brought into brought into those. I think I think the other the other thing we have to be concerned about is is the data itself. You know, we we talk about big data, the opportunities big data gives to us. But you know, the majority of businesses we talk about or talk to tell us that they have so much data. It makes decision making more difficult. How do they get the right data? How do they get the relevant data to really to really support their to support their decision making? So that's a challenge. So so how do companies or or executives um, look to join the dots? Because I guess one of the big challenges with so much information is um, that you kind of get into the lateral, as into the literal and not into the lateral. Yeah. Okay, let, let's let's start this from foundations, and I think you know the foundations is that across the business there must be an understanding of two things. One is the business's model, how it operates with the environment, what it's seeking to do, what its inputs are, what its outputs are, and what the relationships are with all the different stakeholders. The second piece is an understanding of the business's strategy. Where is it trying to get to in the long term? Once you've got that in place, then that gives you that gives you a foundation to move forward on and something that you can then apply your, apply your data to, see how impacts are going to, you know, are going to affect it and how that decision, that decision will work. Um, in, terms of, in terms of compensating for any bias, again, we see, we see successful businesses building business partnering. And very often we see management accountants supporting executives supporting board members in that decision making, compiling the data, ensuring that the bias is, is outside of that, ensuring that the data covers all aspects of the business and the environment in which they're operating in and where the decision is being made. So do you, Andrew, have any kind of tips for, for those who may be sort of struggling with decision making? Are there um, directions that people can follow um, within that to, to get to better decisions? I think, I think there are. I, mean, I think there's, there's, one, there's one cliche which is a decision is better than no decision. No decision means the business is paralysed. 
Um, so you need to you need to move forward, and you need to, you need to move forward in the best the best possible way. And I think probably the simplest way for me to advise a business would be firstly define and understand your business model. Secondly, communicate your strategy widely, and thirdly, have in place competent and experienced business partners who understand how to analyze data, how the statistics around data around data work. It's very easy to look at a data set and draw a conclusion from it. It's for what's far more challenging is to draw a valid conclusion from a data set. Um, and, you know, if it comes to a, if it comes to a personal piece around decision making, um, I would say walk in the customer's shoes. Think about the customer. Think about what they want. Think about what they need. Think about think about how they feel when they when they interact with you. Think about their motivations. And again, that starts to that starts to pull you in the right in the right direction. And do you think, Andrew, in, in terms of that decision making, you've worked with lots of boards, you've worked with lots of executives. Um, what are some of the challenges sometimes around getting that consensus around decision making? Is, is, is that something that um, you could offer some advice and, and thoughts about? Well, yeah, I've, and sometimes everyone says, "Well, if you get if you go for consensus, you're never going to get you're never going to get where you where you need to be." Equally, <coughs> you know, an autocratic decision is probably where you don't want to be where you don't want to be either. But a good a good data driven solution. You, you, know, you, you, you should end up not even seeking consensus. The proposition should be, should be powerful enough to drive, to drive the result. Um, you know, so you shouldn't be searching around for data to support a way in which I want to go. It's, you look around the data and you understand the data and that directs you in where you want to go. Great. Well, I think, Andrew, just in terms of Perhaps one last final question. Is there any decision in business that you've made that you think has been a real success? <laughs> um, yeah, it's a $60 million question, isn't it? And um, why? <laughs> and why? And why? Um, well, let me just let me just let me just get on to get on to one. I'm not going to I'm not going to be specific around it. But it was it was around designing programs for training accountants. And I had recently moved jobs from being a, a consumer to being a supplier, and that was where I really learned the benefit of being able to you know, walk in those customers' shoes and apply how it felt as being a consumer to the product, to the proposition, and hugely, hugely powerful. It was, it was powerful enough to transform the business, just that one single decision. Great. Well, thank you, Andrew, for your time. Thank you for your insights into decision making. And uh, we look very much forward to, to your comments um, and uh, thanks again for your time, Andrew.